Hi everyone. Uh, this is going to be a relatively short video about how the settlement is impacting us. And, and I've done a number of different accredited buyer representative classes around the state. And I just want to do this for you. I put this PowerPoint presentation together for you. So the first is we need to take a breath. Remember when all this came out, uh, I did a video and I said, Hey, my hair was, you know, on fire, but I told everybody take a breath and quit running around, you know, worried about everything. I, I hope you've done that. Uh, but let's look at what this all really means for us. Okay. So uh, on September 4th, a friend of mine, Matthew Triani, who's a legal counsel at NAR, uh, he's going to be doing a Zoom meeting with us. Uh, he's not only a personal friend, but he's uh, the son of one of my Naval Academy classmates. And I'm in the link, you're going to get the presentation too that I'm, I'm doing today. But you can click on the Navigating the Practice Changes webinar. And he's one of the people that's talking on it. Now, before you say, well, if I see this, I don't have to. No, I think this is important because he is going to answer questions. Uh, and again, that's uh, the email has gone. It will be going out here later today. Uh, and it's going to be a Zoom meeting September 4th at 2 p.m. And it's just for us. OK. All right. So what are the changes to the business based on the sum? Well, really nothing major as far as we're concerned, uh, except for forms within NVAR docs and really how things are set up as to who pays the brokerage. OK, but let's look at what changes we will see. OK, or we do see. So uh, we don't you know, you need a buyer brokerage agreement to show a home. OK, now if you're the listing brokerage, OK, if it's a listing within Fathom, you do not need a buyer's agency agreement to show it. So any Fathom brokerage, any Fathom brokerage homes, you don't need a buyer brokerage. Why? Because the broker owns the listing. But, but Mark, it's not my listing. It doesn't matter. You're representing the seller at the time that you're showing. it. So that's fine. Uh, you do want to do an uh, uh, unrepresented parties disclosure. OK, that's that's definite. Uh, the you know, we don't have it, but other people have had some like normal compensation. We don't have that. There is no no, no um, cooperative compensation being shown in the MLS or any of its syndicated sites. Now, on your site, you can put it, but any of the sites like Zillow or anything like that, no compensation. Uh, the fact that the seller is paying the buyer brokerage compensation is not shared compensation. And that's evident on the listing agreement. Uh, the offer of seller paid buyer brokerage compensation is negotiable. OK. And again, if you remember when Heidi Marine did the video, it is not uh, it's not binding what's in the listing agreement it becomes binding when it's in the offer, uh, the, say, the offer to purchase. OK, and buyer brokerage compensation is only limited, is limited to only what's in the buyer brokerage agreement. So if the offer of compensation is higher than the buyer brokerage agreement or lower, you are going to have to do an addendum. In addition to that, there are no more bonuses. So you can't put uh, whatever, let's say you put two and a half percent plus whatever bonus. No, it has to be in there as to the amount of the bonus. So bonuses are gone. OK, and you say, well, I can do a new addendum and it's sort of frowned on with the, the bonuses. We can understand that compensation because that's negotiated in the contract. Bonuses are a little different because it's not in the contract anymore in, a, in any way. Now, for new homes, you're going to need to have an addendum. You're going to need to do things because each builder is different. OK, so what's not changed? Our buyer brokerage agreement has to be in writing. It's had to be in writing since 2012. The commissions are negotiable. We know that we've been dealing with that. The seller is still paying the commission, but it's just formatted differently. OK, so that's not changed. OK, that's not changed. So that's important to just understand that. Uh, again, like I said, you can show any Fathom listing without a buyer brokerage agreement. So if uh, somebody has a listing in the office, uh, let's say out of Nova East, uh, you know, Leanne Johnson has a listing. OK, and we, you know, one of the agents here in Nova West or Nova South want to show it. That's fine because it's within the brokerage. It doesn't have to be within the, you know, the, uh, the, the office. It just has to be within Fathom. The buyer brokerage agreements are negotiable as far as the duration. OK, so if you have somebody that says, well, I want to see the house, 
but I really don't want to be bound to you. You have to explain the buyer brokerage agreement to them. And it's okay in my book, okay, for any of my agents, it's okay to say, all right, so how about if we do it just for this house or just for this weekend? And then do an addendum if they're saying, look, I really like you, let's extend that out. Uh, but And again, finally, the buyer may need to pay some or all the compensation. Guys, that was in our buyer brokerage agreements in the beginning. So it's, it's not a big deal. That's all not changed, okay? So what's my opinion? My opinion is, in this case, what it what hurts, okay? What this what this settlement does to hurt our business. I think the public misunderstands it, okay? And listening to radio and some of the the pundits and and the press, they don't either they don't understand it, or geez, what a surprise! The press is manipulating it for their own purposes. With that in mind, because the public won't understand it, might not understand it. It's going to create, I believe, some strife in buyer's agency agreements and in listing agreements. It's also, with that in mind, going to, in my opinion only, create more unrepresented buyers because buyers are going to go, well, heck, I can get a deal. I'll just, I'll just, they'll pay me the 3%. Well, that's crazy. Okay. Uh, it may, may allow the buyer to get a little bit more, you know, some seller uh, concessions, maybe. But, you know, the fact that they're going to get deals, how much of a deal is it when nobody is looking out for your best interest, which is how buyer brokerage came to be about. I also believe it's going to create future lawsuits. This is what I mean. We're going to have buyer sellers say, well, wait a minute. So if I knew that offering more in compensation was going to create, that's going to be the first one. The second one's going to be. Well, I felt I had to be unrepresented and, and now I was I was I was screwed over by whether they want to say the seller or the agent, it's gonna come out. And so those are my opinions on why this seller might hurt. But I believe that the good stuff far outweighs any of the problems. Here's the reason why. First of all, I think that there are going to be realtors that are going to leave the business. Why? They're gonna go, I don't like the new rules. I never had to do a buyer brokerage agreement. I buy. Else, we're that's fine by me. We're also going to get people that are going to say, Well, I've never had to do this, and I don't understand. Somebody has to explain this to me. This is uh, this is uh, too 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 much of a problem. Uh, you know, the, the the consumer knows what's going on. Out of here, goodbye. And then, ah, look, it's making my job harder. I, I don't want to work this hard I, again. Bye. It was nice knowing you. Please leave. Don't let the door hit you in the butt. Okay. So we're going to get people who I believe are not going to be professional. We're not going to want to work, not ready for change, any change at all. Go. Fine. I, and I don't know what the number will be. Don't know. Uh, I've heard that, uh, that there are some things in NARs looking at a decrease. I also read something where there have been more agents that have gotten in the business in the last couple of months. Who knows? Okay. We'll know in January when, when other things change. Uh, as far as uh, when people are having to pay their dues, when people are, you know, when, when the associations come out and say, hey, people haven't paid their dues and now they're gone. The other thing is that I think is going to be a benefit is sellers and buyers are going to be more savvy about compensation. Now, I, I don't think this is going to be immediate. I think this is going to be not too long afterwards, but I think savvy, uh, savvy consumer is a good consumer. Okay, a savvy consumer is a good consumer. The next thing is that we're going to have to show our value. What is our value proposition? Why us? Why you? You're going to have to sell yourself and justify what your compensation is and why it's important, why you deserve what you're getting. Okay, and I'm going to do a video on that here soon. And I think with that is going to be some public perception because I think an increase, a betterment in public perception. Because those of us that are staying and that are truly professionals and can discuss our value and show our value and, and get the public to understand and, and have our clients appreciate what we do are going to be long lasting. We're going to be profitable and it's going to, it's going to make the public understand that we're professionals. We're not hired guns. We're not people that just are in this just as a lot just to make money, although there are some and maybe they're the ones that are leaving, hopefully but that we're professionals. And so I think this is going to be a good thing. I do want to play one thing for you. 
uh, as uh, as we leave this. So hopefully you guys recognize David Bowie and his song Changes, and that's what we're facing. All right? So turn and face it, embrace it, and press on. Go make your mama proud. <laughs>